Hello, everybody. Again. Hello. 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 Are you having fun? Yes. 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 We are about to have more. Right. So, if you don't know who I am, I'm Nicholas. I'm Hi, making. Hi, Nicholas. Yeah. I like the pirate shirt. I'm gonna go. go sorry, uh, wrong session. Um, I'm uh, making a mass distributed software for a living uh, since uh, uh, about uh, 11 years ago. It all started somewhat like this. This is a photo from 2004 from the first company that, uh, the first IT company I was working with uh, my friend here and my best friend in the middle. So yeah, that, that guy over there at the far uh, right of the picture as you see is me, even though it doesn't look like me. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, such a so, so yes. I've, I've, I've been around Joomla so long that I no longer have any hair left, <laughs> and I've, I, I was 100 kilos, I lost 20 kilos, and I regained everything back because I, I'm involved with, uh, with Joomla. And, <laughs> and my, my remote just died, so I will ask for a volunteer crystal. <laughs> I was voluntold. Yes, to yeah, uh, just see. Making this very yeah, convenient. Sit there and make sure that I can see the screen, so I have an idea what the next slide. Am I in the way? That's important. All right. So now that we solved our technical Red issue position. by by using <laughs> a backup human, <laughs> uh, uh, space, space. <laughs> The connection isn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. let's, see, let's see what the fuck is backwards compatibility. Oh yeah, of course there, there are a bit of uh, facts in my presentation, like every presentation I make. If you don't hear me sharing, then something is wrong with me. Uh, space. <laughs> so, backwards compatibility is different things to many people. Usually, people think that it is change prevention. However, this is the wrong mindset. In fact, it is. <laughs> no, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's change <laughs> facilitation. Thank you. The, the thing about backwards compatibility, which is a misnomer, is that we want to make it easier for things to change. So let's see what's being included in uh, backwards compatibility. Space. <laughs> Good. Yeah, you can have the mask. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, like that, that, that sounds good. That, that's how we did it in Northern. That sounds much Yeah, this is like. <laughs> I've been back in 2004, remember the, the, the previous uh, slide? Yeah. So are you backwards compatible with that device? So we, we, we now <laughs> have backup hardware. <laughs> so, backwards compatibility in a software project includes the code, and when we say code, we mean the API, how you are interacting with that piece of software externally, but not the actual implementation of the API. Uh, there is the data continuity, which means that all the data that you have put in this piece of software uh, will somehow continue to exist as you are uh, modifying and transforming the software. But the, de the data continuity does not include, for example, the scheme of the database. You have the interface, like the graphical user interface, but that doesn't mean that the template, the actual graphics and colors and where things are, are placed are going to forever be the same, otherwise we would all still be using those. And of course, the workflow, and when we say workflow, we mean how you think about how you, you uh, wrap your head around a specific process, but not the actual steps you may change some steps to make the process even better. So basically, backwards compatibility is uh, kind of um, elastic. Basically, backwards compatibility includes the expectations of whoever is using your piece of software, 
but it doesn't include the implementation details of that software. And of course, the other typical question we get about progress compatibility is, who cares, right? We're developers, we're adding open source software, we want to, to write the best software out there. Who cares about progress compatibility? Isn't it a, a waste of time? Well, developers care. Why do they care? They want to have a stable API, so they do not have to rewrite their software from scratch every time you discover something cool and new and you decide to rewrite the underlying framework from scratch. Um, they care about data continuity because of course they are interfacing the database because they're interacting with user data, otherwise what the hell are they doing with their software, right? Uh, and they don't want to have to reinvent everything from scratch. Yes, they do care about the interface somewhat, mostly because every uh, change, every uh, massive change you make to the interface has a penalty in the re-implementation of DOM. And uh, there is uh, a pain point here about JavaScript, as uh, Rob told us yesterday in his session in this room. And uh, of course they care about the workflow for documentation purposes. Uh, that's for developers that actually write documentation, but that's a different discussion. End users care about, about backwards compatibility. They're not directly affected by your API, but the extensions they're using uh, on Joomla or WordPress or Drupal or whatever, basically, <coughs> Anything which, is, which isn't the first party uh, piece of the software they're using, uses this API. If the API breaks, then what they're using also breaks, and they cannot get stuff done. And when people cannot get stuff done, they get furious. And when they get furious, oh, trust me, you will hear about it. They care about data continuity, because, okay, imagine that. Uh, you have an e-commerce platform, which upgrades a new major version, and suddenly all your products are gone, all your orders are gone, all your uh, clients are gone. Would you trust that? Would you use that to build your next shop? Yeah. You'd run as fast as you can. So data continuity matters a hell of a lot for end users. And sometime in the past, <coughs> Zuma 1.5, <coughs> uh, we told users, oh, nice, you have a site, it has all these thousand articles and data, throw it away. Yeah, it worked very, very well. We lost a lot of people. So guess what? They care. Of course they care about the interface. However, uh, it's a bit more flexible. So when you make radical changes to the interface, users will be completely lost because they no longer know what they're looking at, but they can be trained. It's much better if you make small iterative changes, aka backwards compatibility in the interface, mm. because then the users kind of know where to look. Something looks a bit off, but they don't really see the big difference. Case in point, going from Zoom 2.5 to 3.0 was a massive interface change. Everybody was in uproar. Ah, what do you do that? Oh, we can't find anything. Oh, you broke everything. Zoom 3.0 to 3.5, have you noticed how much the interface has changed? No? You did. Yeah. It has changed massively, but not overnight. It changed over four years. Nobody noticed because there were small changes. So people were, were installing the new version and were like, something's a bit off. Oh, there it is, the thing that I was looking for. I must have remembered it wrong. See, purpose compatibility works and it's very important for the end user. And of course, the workflow. Like, if I want to publish an article, what do I have to do? If in one version of your software you have to click here and there and then click on publish, and on the other, and the next major version of your software, you have to go to a completely different menu, click another sub item, and then click a hidden button write the article and then uh, dance uh, around and uh, click another 50 buttons. Uh, that's not going to, to sit very well for the user because they have no idea where to look for those things. 
And of course, there is the other side of, uh, of this discussion, the people who say that backwards compatibility sucks. And they say that if you're backwards compatible, then you can never change uh, your code and you're stuck with ancient code like WordPress, which isn't entirely true because they have, they have not done their homework and they don't know exactly how WordPress works. But that's also uh, not the point here since it's a Zoomla conference. Um, backwards compatibility does not prevent you from making implementation changes or making gradual changes to your API. It just tells you that you need to have a plan, not just to run changes, throw them over the wall, and hope that nobody gets hurt. They say that uh, data continuity forces you to have a specific schema that can never change, so you're stuck with, your, with how the world worked 20 years ago. Uh, that could only happen if you are a complete and utter idiot, because, as I said, purpose compatibility is not about keeping your schema unsaved. A big case in point is, again, Zoomla 2.5 to Zoomla 3.5, massive changes in the underlying schema, not a nose split. Why? Because there was a nice continuity, there was an upgrade path from one version to the other, so there was data continuity. Perfect. Interface. They're saying that, well, if you want to have purpose compatibility for the interface, then uh, what happens is uh, Joomla 3, where we have Bootstrap 2 for four years since it was end of life. This is also not entirely true. Uh, first of all, when you decide what kind of third-party framework to adopt, uh, you should also think about how, for how long you're going to support it and what is your plan for when it stops being supported by the people who make it. So again, we have a common theme here, uh, having a plan. And of course, the workflow. Uh, they say that if you want to be backwards compatible with your workflow, then you can never change it. You will always have to do things specific way. Not entirely true. You can introduce small changes that improve the workflow in its version. Basically, the idea is give people change a small bite at a time, not throw a huge rock onto their faces and see if they survive. It's not happening. So let's see how it's done. And I say that backwards compatibility is done properly when you take into account the four Ds. The first D is direction, the method to our madness. John Kennedy said, efforts and currents are not enough without purpose and direction. It doesn't matter if you want to save the world, if you have the best intentions, and if you think that you can do it, or even if you're able to do it. If you do not have a clear sense of direction, where you are, where you want to go, some intermediate steps that you need to follow, what you're going to do is going to be random and honestly crap. Uh, so when you're thinking about backwards compatibility, it's part of your direction. If you know that you're here and you want to go there, and you have planned the intermediate steps, then the next step is going to take into account when you, where you were before. So you can make a gradual change without uh, everybody looking from the outside, thinking that you're doing some random stuff that makes no sense. The second D is deprecation. Don't throw your existing audience under the bus. Uh, Michael Porter, who is a very famous uh, economist, uh, has said, finally, strategy must have continuity. It can't be constantly reinvented. This, is, this also links with the direction. Uh, since you already have a plan, you know that the next step doesn't mean throw everything away, piece off all your existing clients, uh, and tell them to start from scratch. There is some, some, some sense of, uh, of, of continuity, some sense of belonging. So, if we said that uh, because the web has changed, blah, 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 we will implement the next version of Joomla in, I don't know, Swift, uh, 
or let's say that we stay with PHP, we implement it with Laravel or Symfony, this doesn't sit very well. There's no continuity there. But if we say that we have a plan and we want to include this and that new feature, uh, and we introduce this feature in this version, this feature in the next version, so on and so forth, until we get to this place that we have a nice continuity. And we, by virtue of this plan, we know that this old feature, like the old MVC that we have inherited from Joomla 1.5, has got to be deprecated and removed in a future version of Joomla, let's say in version 4.3 so people can know and plan. Which brings us to the next pain point, the next D, which is deadlines. Deadlines tell you when, when things are done. And this is very important because everybody needs to be able to also plan based on what you want to do. And they can only do that if they have a good idea of when this will happen. And remember what Steve Jobs famously said, real artists sit. If you believe that you can publish software with the uh, mantra of it's ready when it's ready, you're going to lose people and people will not trust you. Because no deadlines say that you don't know what you're doing. And you're basically just doing random stuff and see if anything sticks. And when you believe that something sticks, you release. But that's not a good message. And the final D is documentation. All right, you have a plan, you know what's going to be deprecated and when. How do you convey that information to everybody else? Uh, I'm probably going to kill this name because it does. Vice uh, Venema, who's the author of Postfix. Uh, email service that powers with plus entire internet has said that lack of documentation is becoming a problem for acceptance. A big problem with open source in particular because we developers stupidly think that if we make a change and commit it on GitHub, that's all the documentation we need. That's one commit out of 5,000 that make the new major version, if you actually believe someone will go through all 5,000 commits to see what the hell did you change, when, and what the fuck they're supposed to do, you're wrong. If you tell that to someone face to face, make sure that they're behind a safety glass and that you can run fast. And of course, we have the people who say, but I only make two extensions, why do I care? People are just going to use my component, my plugin, my module, my template, my library, of course. Uh, why would I need to care about backwards compatibility? Well, here's the thing. Your component or module has view templates. So how many people are going to be using your component as this? <coughs> and how many are going to be customizing it for their needs. <coughs> the truth is that most people will customize it for their needs, otherwise their site will be crap. Because admittedly, most of us are developers, not designers. So make sure that your few templates either work with the next version of your software or you have documented the changes that need to be made. Uh, guilty as charged. Your user data. By installing a new version of your software, the user data shouldn't just vanish into thin air uh, or require a complex conversion process that uh, can only be done by super geeks. Because in this case, the, your, your clients would want to uninstall your extension and find something else. Update management. <sighs> yeah, <coughs> how easy it is for someone to update to the new version of your software. It's not as simple as it sounds. Trust me, I know. Especially with the last week that I was trying to do something that Joomla isn't supposed to be able to do. And I thought I nailed it. Guess what? No, I didn't. Uh, so make sure that you 
really test your updates very, 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 very thoroughly and make sure that there is a smooth update path to your extensions. And of course, workflow continuity. If the new version of your software has an entirely different interface uh, and people feel lost, people will magically stop using your software. Surprise! Some people say, but I only make two my sites. Of course I don't care about, your, about backwards compatibility. And I say, of course you're wrong. Because your site has URLs. URLs have huge value for search engine optimization. When you are refreshing or redoing the site, did you think that you have to keep those URLs or at least redirect them in a way that search engines understand? If you don't, then basically everything that you had managed to achieve as far as search engine optimization goes with the old site vanishes and you start from scratch. And I bet your client didn't hire you to screw them. User data preservation. This obviously has to uh, has some relevance on sites that accept user data. When we say user data, it could be user registrations. Uh, any e-commerce data that you're keeping about uh, past clients or if you have a service that uh, where, where users submit any amount of information that information it has to be moved forward to the next version of the site a very common mistake that site integrators do is assume that the site doesn't change between the point they were hired and the point they launched the new site so Think about it, no, the, the site will change because you are not going to be making this change in one second. You are going to be making these changes in a matter of months to launch the new site. And you need to take into account that you need a process to transfer all this data right before the launch. Interface continuity. There are people who have been coming to this site for an amount of time and they knew where to find stuff. What happens if you change that? According to my experience, they send you angry emails. Where the fuck is that stage from? Uh, Brian is empty here, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> or they send you an angry email. I can no longer find my downloads. What the hell is going on? Yeah. So there should be some kind of uh, continuity that hints the people where they have to go to find the same stuff on, your, on the site. And of course, don't forget that the site is actually being used by humans who manage it in the back end. Uh, you need to keep things pretty much uh, not the same, uh, but understandable. They have a continuity in the back end as far as the workflow, the workflow goes. If they want to change this stuff on the page, do they know where they have to go? If they don't, did you train them? Did you observe? any anger when you were training them, as in, dude, this doesn't make any sense. If you get this dude, that this doesn't make any sense reaction from the people who are managing the site, you might want to reconsider what you thought was a brilliant idea. Spoiler alert, usually it's not a brilliant idea. And of course, we all make Zoomla together, and this is why we're here at Say and Beyond. So, as far as backwards compatibility goes, Zoomla is somewhere here, with this end on the left being fully backwards compatible. Almost all code that we've written in the past decade works, and the other far end being no backwards compatibility, which means that on every uh, major version you need to rewrite everything. On the fully backwards compatible end, but not quite fully, is WordPress. Most of the code that's been written for WordPress 3 can still run on WordPress 4. We're talking about seven, eight years or something. Um, on the other end, we have Drupal, where in its major version of Drupal, you need to throw away your site and start from scratch because the internal API is completely different. And Joomla doesn't sit actually in the middle, it sits on the uh, not a lot of backwards compatibility and a better place for Joomla to be is actually more to the center. Uh, 
this is a small assessment. We're, we're good, we're not very good. Why do I say that we want to move it to the center? It's because of shit my CMS does. Just a warning, truth is like poetry, and most people fucking hate poetry. This was overheard in a Washington DC bar, not by me, by uh, uh, a famous uh, author. So let's see how Tsungla does things a bit suboptimal. Direction. We surely know where we're going, right? Say beyond 2015, that's last year, this is not a time. We decided that Tsungla 4.0 uh, will uh, be released within the next year, have small user-facing improvements, remove deprecated code, introduce minor code improvements. That was perfect. That was in the end of May 2015. Then in July 2015, we had an architecture, an architecture sprint where we discussed more of those ideas. Uh, we decided that more architectural changes were in focus, the original user facing improvements were watered down, and by that I mean half of them were last. October 2015, we had the second architecture sprint. The focus completely shifted on overhauling the architecture. Uh, there was only one major user, face, user facing change that was decided that, if implemented, will be a game changer. Uh, completely changes the workflow for building sites. Any other changes were pretty much canceled. Which brings us to early 2016. Apparently, at this point, the idea was throw everything out of the window and write the damn thing from scratch. Users and everybody else be down. Which doesn't sound very good. So, fast forward a couple of months later, Say and beyond 2016, Zoomla uh, 4.0 will be released in one year with small user facing improvements, uh, remove deprecated code, and introduce minor code improvements. Jules? <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense? Yeah, that's, 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 Zoomla. <laughs> that, that's Zoomla's direction. Yeah, well. I think it's safe to say that we cannot be to fix that. Deprecation. Like, we have continuity <coughs> in our code, right? Well, even though this example is a bit old, but <coughs> it never really gets old. Same models in uh, Joomla 1.5, 1.6, and the first versions of 2.5. Keep that in mind, we're in the first versions of 2.5. Same model is a database aware base model class. And you expect that this continues on through the entire 2.5 release, right? And no, sorry. Because in uh, 2.5, 2.5.4, was it, George? Five. Five? Well, five is the last one, but it's six. That's one. Okay, 2.5.6. The model becomes an interface to generic MVC model. No implementation. You cannot extend from it. It's an interface. However, what was the same model is now called same model legacy, which is a database aware based model class. That's the old same model renamed. Of course, nothing is like adding insult to injury. Because the person who made the change, who adamantly supported the change, because this is what Martin Fowler says in his book, later said, we got it wrong. That's a little twisted. I would say that shit like that should never happen. Forget that it breaks uh, semantic versioning. Forget that it makes no sense. Forget that even the person who did that thought it was wrong after all. The question is, why was it even allowed? And why did we allow sites to break on a, on a point release 
just because deadlines. I don't think it means what you think it means. And I'm looking at the only PLT member, even though he's the one who's trying to get the seat released. So, back in 2010, uh, we were preparing to release Joomla 1.6, that famously would be ready when it's ready. That is, we have no clue what we're doing and how long it will take us. Uh, in the end, it took two years. It was uh, released in late 2010, early 2011, depending on whether you count the betas or the actual stable as the release date. Joomla 1.7 to 3.3 were supposed to be timed releases, released every six months. Mostly okay, they were released between six to eight months. That was good, it was predictable, and we could actually schedule our own releases according to Joomla. Great. Joomla 3.3, every three months. In fact, released once a year. 3.3, 3.4, 3.5, 3.5, scheduled to take three months to 12, 13, and again 13 months. <laughs> yeah, because that makes sense. I think that we should have uh, slightly better deadlines. Like, it's safe to say it will take a year. If it takes less, power to you. Documentation. Usually, it looks like that. It's ancient Chinese with missing bits. And documentation in Joomla is one of the rare cases where when even uh, reverse engineering the source code is not enough. For example, going from 2.5 to 3.0 was documented. Thank you, Michael Babker. Hope you see this video. Uh, everything else is actually not. Case in point. Joomla 1.0 up to and including 3.4. JFactory get mailer would return JMail or false. That's fairly predictable. It was the last thing that I thought that would break because it's working for 10 years. Joomla 3.5 without any warning, JFactory get mailer returns JMail or throws an exception. Is it documented? <laughs> 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 yeah, thanks for Michael Babker. He managed to undo the group. <laughs> there is a fine line between visionary and rogue. Unfortunately, you need to be a visionary to see it. <laughs> <laughs> However, sometimes we nail it. I have to give you that. For example, Joomla 3.3, we had say string. Joomla 3.4, we said that's bad. We want the namespaces. But how do we preserve backwards compatibility? Of course, we can have JString extends Joomla string string. Backwards compatible, yay! <laughs> Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we have Joomla 3.4, JString extends Joomla string string. You would expect that to remain the same. However, in PHP 7, string is a reserved word which means that you cannot have a class named string or everything breaks. So Joomla 3.5 did what? Rename it to string helper, which is not backwards compatible. So, remember how Joomla is supposed to be using semantic versioning? Do you know what semantic versioning is? Who knows? Okay, for, for, for those who do not know, one of the things about semantic versioning is that the major version, the first digit before the dot, is supposed to increase whenever you're making a change that's completely backwards incompatible with the previous version. So between 3.4 and 3.5 we had such a change, but instead of calling it 4.0 we called it 3.5. So bonus points for making a change that is incompatible with semantic versioning. Yay! <laughs> I believe that as a Joomla community, we can do better. And in fact, we must.
do better. And at any point, no matter if we are core developers, extension developers, site integrators, or anything in between, we need to keep in mind that backwards compatibility is a misnomer. It's all about change management. And in the end of the day, backwards compatibility is all about user experience. <laughs> it's about not fucking up the user of your software, no matter if it's another developer, if it's a site integrator, or if it's the pool buster that tries to manage that site. Backwards compatibility, let's not call it backwards compatibility anymore. Let's call it change management and continuity. It's all about making our software easier to use by everybody and facilitating change. Because as Kevin John said this morning, we cannot stay with what we have. We need to change. We need to improve. Questions? Yes, George? Are there any real world applications for this talk? Are there any? Real world applications for this talk? Of backwards compatibility? Yes, there is WordPress. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to, to hear the video. Yeah. Apache. Dot HD access. It was very strongly backwards compatible between version 1.1 to uh, 2.4. It was pretty much the same, and there was only a backwards compatibility break in uh, 2.5. Uh, when they introduce a different method for authentication. So there you have your real-world application. Bet between version 1 and 2, Apache was basically half rewritten. So there you go. And I also believe that Joomla framework is uh, mostly backwards compatible. Mostly. When I say mostly, I mean that uh, you're not completely screwing people and you document the changes as you go. So you have a continuity. You're not like dropping a ball and changing everything and whatever happens. Usually. Not in the stream packets, which is incidentally the most used package outside of Joomla. But a stream is a package to mm -hmm. yeah. So these are the some of the real world applications. Other question? Going once, going, yeah. How do you, did you prepare your speech so quickly? <laughs> How did I prepare my speech so quickly? OK, so this is stuff that I have been talking about uh, in uh, conferences with other people outside of sessions for the last six years. And I'm trying to convince them that no, you should not be making random, massive changes just for the sake of it or because you read a book. You need to have a plan. And as I have been writing in blog posts for the last four years, the biggest thing that's missing in Joomla is vision, is direction. There is absolutely no direction. And this was demonstrated uh, last year, say in 2015, when I came up with a direction for Joomla 4. We discussed it, we agreed on it. One year later, we did a full 360 and came back to the same point we started from. So, yeah, uh, these were things that were in my head for all that long, so I just had to put them in two slides. All right, thank you very much. See you